G'day guys, how's it going? Now in this video, I suppose I should pick up where I left off from my last video. Now, we discussed, basically, wires that are used for carrying EU. And I also discover, uh, I didn't discover anything. I discussed uh, essentially what low voltage, medium voltage and high voltage are. And also, you know, possibly, you know, extreme voltage is what the, uh, you know, any voltage above high voltage is, you know, unofficially called. So now we are going to move on to storing EU and transmitting EU as well as transforming EU. Storing, transmitting, and transforming. Once we've got those down, then we can finally move on to stuff like uh, these blocks that are generating EU. Uh, that's, that's a fairly sort of... I'd love to be able to say I can just gloss over that, but I can't really because there's a lot of them and there's a lot of rules and so forth. And That's really the main point that I was going to make in the end. So... Generators are going to be a video all on their own and they might even span across two videos to be honest And then finally all the machines that can use EU and that will pretty much wrap up All of the basics that you need to well essentially go through the industrial craft tree and uh, Everything else in the Greg tech add-on by the way uh, that you'll find in like, you know, the Fib beast mod pack or you know Technic pack all of that stuff Actually, I'm not sure if Greg tech add-on is in Technic pack, but anyways, any mod pack or if you've just got industrial craft and Greg Tech installed, it won't take much to figure out Greg Tech if you've got all of this down pat. Honestly, uh, once you got this basics, it's a cinch. So let me just run to that mossy cobble wall, and we get to this now. I suppose it looks like we are talking about. Storage. This is something called a bat box. You can break it with a pickaxe and get your bat box back. That's an important concept because a lot of machines in industrial craft, if you break them with a pickaxe, um, you won't exactly get that particular machine back. You'll get sort of like um, the tier of machine block that was used to make it in the first place, if that makes any sense. So... With this one, you don't have to worry about using a wrench. Uh, wrenches are used to try and get, you know, the particular machine back intact. But this one, get your pickaxe and just go nuts. This is a bat box that stores EU. Power level 0 of 40,000. Out, 32 EU per tick. And it's got this little sort of redstone thing which changes its behavior depending on what you want. I just... I always leave them on nothing because I honestly, uh, I don't find a use for them. This is how you make a bat box. One, two, three rechargeable batteries, copper cable, and five uh, wood planks. These can be pretty much any type of wood planks, at least vanilla wood planks. I'm not sure about the wood planks from trees from other mods like um, extra biomes or um, uh, uh, what are other mods that... Add trees. Yeah, you get the general gist. You might be able to try them. They uh, maybe they work in the recipe. In fact, let me just check. Oh, well, there we go. Capoc wood planks, walnut wood planks. Oh, even those um, wood chip thingies. Okay, so it seems you can use pretty much any type of wood planks to make this bat box. And bat box has a few characteristics. Let's see. It has an output of 30 EU per packet and it outputs one packet per tick. Now, before I go any further, let me explain something. Um, whenever you read up on anything from Industrial Craft or whatnot, uh, or if you hear videos of, you know, YouTube videos from other YouTubers talking about this sort of stuff, they don't bother saying something like, this bat box will output 30 EU per packet. No. Instead, they will say something like, uh, this bat box outputs low voltage or this bat box will output 32 EU per tick. I'm just going to explain this once, uh, just to get it out there, and then once you've, if you understand that, and you can get your hand around it nice and easy, then I will just do what everyone else does, which is say, you know, 32 EU per tick, 
to be honest, I think about that in my head too. But basically, just in case you, it wasn't quite clear in the last video, or if you haven't watched my last video, what I mean is this thing will output 32 EU per packet. So the packets have a voltage of 32 EU, which is equivalent to the maximum amount of voltage you can have for it to qualify as low voltage. Okay, 128 is medium voltage. Uh, 512 is high voltage. This thing, 30 TEU per packet, and it outputs one packet per tick. So it's equivalently the same as saying it outputs 30 TEU per tick. The only misleading, um, uh, the only way you can be misunderstood exactly what's going on, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty nuts and bolts of it, is that when you say it's outputting 30 EU, 32 EU per tick, you can say, oh yeah, that's nice, but um, how many packs is it outputting per tick and how much voltage are each of those packets outputting? Basically, when it comes to blocks like this, storage blocks or transformer blocks or even uh, generators and so forth, each single block will only output usually, or input, well actually input's a lie. Um, each block will output only one packet per tick, and there are 20 ticks in a Minecraft second. Okay, or 20, 20 Minecraft ticks in a uh, second. I'm pretty sure Industrial Craft sort of piggybacks off that system. So, essentially what I'm trying to say is, yeah, it's kind of the equivalent. And if you see something saying 32 EU per tick, just assume it's 32 EU packets. It's low voltage. That's all I mean. Just getting it out there. And the reason why I wanted to make that distinction, though, is because it's a very different story when it comes to input. Strangely enough, this thing can only output 30 TEU per tick because it's, you know, one packet, blah, blah, I'm not going to go over that again. And it outputs that stuff from the side with the dot. Now, this block, if you saw all around it, you know, every single side looks like you know, the top or this side. It's just brown. Only one particular side has this orange dot on it. And that will, uh, the direction that actually shows determines, is determined, sorry, by whereabouts you place it. So if I'm, let's say I had one in my hand and I was facing this brick wall, okay? When I plonk it down, it's going to show the orange dot facing towards me because that is the opposing face to the face that I put it on. If I put it on the ground, however, actually, no, technically that's not, that's not true. Um, it depends on which way, which direction you're facing. So if I had the block in my hand and I jumped and I did that, then the orange dot would be facing up. Uh, if I did that, it would be facing to me. Again, that would still be facing me because the angle isn't sort of beyond 45 degrees down. It's still relatively horizontal. So basically, the orange dot faces you, uh, you know, the direction that faces you the most when you place it. Very simple. And that is the output side. Output 32 EU per tick as a maximum, okay? Keep that in mind. That's the maximum. It can output a little bit less, or basically, it, you know, it outputs a packet of 32 EU every time it can. Um, but that's all it will do. It's just one. And all of these input sides can each handle 32 EU packets of input. Now, remember how I was saying in my last video that a wire even though it has a certain amount of voltage, it can carry as many packets as you would like to shove in it. That's the same deal with this thing. The input, you can shove um, any number of packets in per tick or per second, so long as each packet has no more than 32 EU for each one. So if you, know, if you had, say, let's say um, a length of wire, it was, I don't know, glass fiber cable, and you had maybe a thousand generators hooked up to it. Um, actually, that's an unrealistic number. Let's just say, for argument's sake, 150 generators, 
and miraculously all of those generated were producing 32 EU packets. Um, in other words, 32 EU per tick output. That one wire can carry all of that power and all of that power would go dumping straight into here and filling it up really fast until it hits the maximum. Now I just realized that I should get rid of those. So that's the difference between output and input. If you want to say regulate how much power is going through a wire, use a storage device like a bat box or something like that and that will enable you to be able to regulate it quite well. In fact, it's it's a reliable amount. If you definitely want medium volt uh sorry, low voltage, make a bat box, put it in your system and then use that to feed your machines just to make sure absolutely that you're only putting 32 EU per tick out. Okay? Uh, it holds 40,000 EU, which to be honest is not a lot. I've shown you how to make it. I'm about to show you how to make an RE battery. Rechargeable batteries, yes, they're sort of like, you know, mini storage, portable storage devices uh, that can hold EU and you can, you know, charge them up and discharge them in machines however you like. To be honest, I only ever use these things as um, part of crafting recipes. There are two recipes that you should be aware of to make these things. This is the original recipe and it still works, but with the Greg Tech add-on, you can double the yield by putting this in. Uh, this is pulverized lead or lead dust. It's interchangeable. And this thing is sulfuric acid cell. This is actually pretty difficult to make. Um, I'm not sure if it's really worth the effort just to get two batteries. Just chuck your redstone in. And of course, you can swap these around and it doesn't matter which one where. That will give you the two times yield. Moving on to something bigger and better. This is one of the first things you strive for. This thing is called an MFE. Notice how it, uh, it's a little bit different from the back box. You know, the same sort of thing. Oh, by the way, I should explain these boxes you can find on all of these EU storage devices. The bottom box is where you put something like, actually, let's make this. Why not? You would put, let's say these RE batteries actually had some power in them. If I put them both in there, or at least one in there, because they can't stack the you know, technicality, I put a RE battery in there, okay? It had a 10,000 EU in it. It would slowly fill up this and empty itself. So it would transfer the EU power that it had stored into the bat box storage. And the top box on all of these storage blocks will drain power. So it's pretty much use that to dump power in, use that to dump power out. Okay, and you can sort of use these little portable um, batteries and so forth uh, to transfer power to and from all over the place. And the same rule applies for stuff like bat packs and lap packs, and maybe I'll get into that in the future, but I'm pretty sure you can discover that for yourself. Now, MFE, it holds 600,000 EU instead of 40,000. So straight off the bat, it's worth, it can hold the same amount of EU as... 15 of these bat boxes and instead of outputting just 32 EU per tick or low voltage it outputs medium voltage uh, as for the input side and output sides it's the same rules as the bat box uh, you know this orange dot faces you whenever you uh, place it let's see output 128 EU per ticket input uh, 128 EU packets or medium voltage on all sides and you can dump as much as you want into it until it's full and then it won't take any more. Uh, this however, remember how I told you that the bat box you can dismantle with a pickaxe and get it every time? Don't do that with an MFE. You have to dismantle it with a wrench. And the good thing about this is Technically, with a wrench, you're not even guaranteed a 100% chance to get most machines back intact. Sometimes they will downgrade to the machine block that they were made with. The MFE is one of the few exceptions to that rule. No matter what wrench you use, in whatever mode you have it in, you will always get your MFE back. And that's probably a good thing because 
let's have a look at how it's made. It costs you, remember I told you to fully rubberize all those cables? Here we go, this is where it's coming into play. Again, two times insulated gold cable in the corners, a machine block in the center, that's, you know, eight refined iron in a box shape like uh, when you would make a furnace out of cobblestone or a chest out of wood. And these things, four energy crystals. Now you're probably wondering, what's an energy crystal? Look at it, energy crystal. Um, holds 100,000 EU. Think of it as like an RE battery on steroids. It's literally an RE, it's, it's 10 RE batteries in one. And in this particular instance, you need them in the crafting recipe. Now, I need to make it clear that whenever you make, I didn't mention this before and I should have, if you make something like a bat box or an MFE, for example, using batteries or energy crystals and so forth, you don't need to have them charged. In fact, it's probably better that you don't make them with these things having any sort of charge in them at all. Make sure they are empty, okay? Otherwise, you might be wasting a U or maybe if you're lucky, some of them will get converted into a um, an amount. Actually, no, that's not true because an MFE and a bat box, whenever you break them um, after they've been placed on the ground, whatever EU they had stored in them, as soon as they are broken or, you know, recovered with a wrench and they become an item and not a block, that's it. Whatever EU was inside them is gone completely. So keep that in mind as well. Transfer all of the power out of your um, storage blocks using these, you know, portable uh, energy devices before you break them. Okay? Use these energy crystals. Make sure they're... Um, pretty much empty because you're using them for a crafting recipe and I'm going to show you how to make pretty sure I've shown you in the past actually machine block anyways that's refined iron machine block nothing new there and an energy crystal ouch okay diamonds if you are playing just industrial craft you won't have something like rubies generating in the world that's from other mods <laughs> Greg Tech and <laughs> Red power as well, I think. Um, so yeah, MFE, it's a nice block, but it will cost you four diamonds and 32, wrong one, 32 redstone. However, if you do have Greg Tech or other mods installed, then there's a good chance that you will have alternative recipes. You don't have to waste your diamonds to make them. Energy crystals can be made with rubies as well. Thank goodness for that, because I tell you what, that's a nice use for rubies, as opposed to your diamonds. That hurts. Okay, moving on to, yes, yet another storage block. And I'm pretty sure you can guess what the go is with this. And you're probably starting to get a little bit worried about these recipes. I'll explain it all in a minute. This thing is called the MFSU. And if you're playing straight industrial craft, just that mod, this is the granddaddy. This is the big Buddha, okay? It holds 10 million EU. The MFE previously only holds 600,000 EU. So, holds 100,000 EU and it outputs 512 EU per tick. In other words, one packet of 512 EU every tick. High voltage. Same deal as before dump power into it using this slot, dump power out of it into a portable energy storage unit using this top slot here. Uh, have a play with that if you want, you know, if you want to make auto automated systems of sorts and stuff. Uh, I, I don't, so I'm not even going to bother going into that again. Same rules as before. Orange dot is the output. Every other face is an input. And uh, yeah, that sign is incredibly wrong. I don't know why I copied that. That should say output and input 512 EU per packet. Dismantles with the wrench 100% of the time and returns the MFSU. Again, don't break it with a pickaxe or you'll just get this advanced machine block back, which kind of sucks because you'll have lost a lot of diamonds. Let me just tell you that right now. Don't do that. Always use a wrench before you dismantle any machine. Doesn't matter. You can even use it for the bat box. 
I know you can break a bat box with a, um, a pickaxe, but it's just a good habit to get into to use a wrench or an electric wrench. So, when you break it with an electric, or dismantle it, I should say, with a wrench, you will always get the MFSU back, unlike a lot of other machines. So that's good to know, because it's really expensive to make. This is how it's made. Six of these things, called Lapatron crystals on the sides, an advanced circuit at the top, an MFE in the middle. Yep. So you've got four diamonds there, and you're probably guessing you need a diamond for each of these, and you would be right sort of, indirectly, they need a diamond each. So this thing costs four diamonds plus one of the other here, ten diamonds to make. But it's kind of worth it, you know. You, with that amount of storage space, make two or three of those, you can buffer up a lot of EU for later use. So, Lapatron Crystals, Advanced Circuit, MFE, and Advanced Machine Block. Let me show you how to make each of those components. Starting with the Advanced Machine Block. You know how to make one of those. Just surround it with carbon plates on the side, advanced alloys on the top bottom, and of course, you know, if you've got the Greg Tech out on or whatnot installed, you can just you know, rotate this. It's all symmetrical along the diagonal plane. Gives you your advanced machine block. So that's, you know, 16 coal smasherated in the macerator and uh, then, you know, compressed and stuff after a little bit of crafting. This you use in the rolling machine if you have railcraft installed and the Greg Tech out only basically feed the beast you need the rolling machine without feed the beast you can make this just mixed metal alloy ingots is what you make and then you can press them and you get the advanced alloy simple enough and it's night time again jeez this video is going a lot longer than I thought I might not get into transformers this video actually I might get into it next video moving along advanced circuit Bung a normal circuit in the middle, so you know, two, um, two redstone on the sides, a refined iron in the middle, and six copper cables making together the sandwich for the original circuits. Advanced circuit is very simple, it's just that circuit in the middle with uh, redstone on the corners, lapis lazuli on the sides, and glowstone dust top and bottom. And yes, again, it's symmetrical along the diagonal plane but if you have other mods installed then you can use other stuff like for instance for some reason if you have a lot of silicon plates and you're sick of making um, basically <laughs> solar panels in Greg Tech you can swap out that electronic circuit for a silicon plate instead you know save yourself a little bit of redstone or however it is you make your silicon to get your silicon plate um, you know, save yourself some copper, some rubber, and, you know, even an iron ingot. Who knows, maybe it's worth it, maybe it's not. Lazarite dust, from the name you can probably guess, you could swap out the lapis lazuli with that stuff, and you can pretty much put it in any combination you like. And last but not least, this is my favourite, I recommend you do this if you have mods installed to give you this recipe. It yields two advanced circuits instead of one, like all of the other recipes. Basically, get into those Electrum ingots, guys. It's important. So, that is the MFSU. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Oh yeah, that's nice. These things store a lot of energy, but, you know, every time I go one tier up, I'm advancing, you know, the amount of voltage that I'm putting out, and I'm sure that there are a lot of machines that can't handle that sort of voltage. You might want to, I don't know, convert it or step it down a notch or two to, you know, I don't know, maybe stop your machines from blowing up by hooking them straight up to this thing. And yes, there are blocks that can do exactly that, or they can step up the voltage. You basically change the voltage of whatever it is that's coming in using something called transformers now not going to get into it this video actually this video is already a little bit longer and I'm endeavoring to try and make my video shorter so I'm just gonna cut it off here and I am going to bid you all goodbye I hope you like this video literally I hope you like it and I also hope you like the like button um, comment rate subscribe 
do whatever you want. Ask any questions or just tell me how thorough I am. Tell me how annoying my voice is. Whatever tickles your fancy. I will tackle Transformers next video. I'll go into those in great detail. And then finally, I will go ahead. Let's go back to our original spot. So now we've done storage devices. We've done wires. We've done... We've explained voltage. Next up is transformers, then finally generators, and last but not least, machines, which to be honest, these are the reason, or at least half the reason why you make these things in the first place. All of this paraphernalia is for the end result. This, or maybe, I don't know. Let's uh, have a quick look at what's in industrial craft we have armor and we have well, look there's something called a solar helmet let's see we've got electric tools that use electricity so they never break they just need to be recharged every now and then you've got these things called you know nano suit boots and leggings you've got quantum suit stuff which is incredibly expensive to make it's basically tools armor and machines that do things sort of quicker or more easily, basically stopping you from wasting fuels like coal and so forth. That's that's the whole reason for you to have this mod in the first place, so you can basically do things with more renewable types of resources-ish. To be explained, catch you later.